In this video, we're going to be looking at, at databases in Delphi and how we can connect and interact with a database through the Delphi program. This video is going to focus particularly on just connecting to the database and also data modules. Here we've got a simple VCL form that we're going to connect a database to. Um, so what we're going to do is we're not going to add the components to, of the database to this form. We're going to show you how we do it via a data module. So we're going to go first go to File, go New, and we're going to go find the data module is not listed there. So we're going to go to Other. Now I can see a data module over there. It's under Delphi Files. If yours is under another list, you just click on Delphi Files, you click on Data Module, and that's what we want to add. So here we've got this data module. It looks a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this first straight away. I'm going to say Save As. I want to save this data module to the same place where my folder is. There's my Delphine databases. This is where we're doing it. So I'm going to save this as DM, and we're going to be using a database based on CD, so I'm going to call it CD underscore U for this unit. So I'm going to save it. So there we go. So that's what it's called. Now I'm going to change the name of this data module, the actual little form part of it. There you can see it's called data module 2. I'm going to call it DMCD. Now there's a few components that we need to put onto this data module and we're going to start off with what we call a connection. So it's an ADO connection. Now if I click over here and type ADO con, we should see an ADO connection. I'm going to put this ADO connection component onto my data module. There it is. Now this is what we call a non-visual component. If the program had to run, you wouldn't necessarily see it. So this ADO connection is what we're going to direct directly, connect directly to the database. So the first things I'm going to change is always good to change the name. I'm going to call this con CD database. So that's what it's called, C con CD database. Then I need to go to the connection string. And here's where we set the settings. Or when we go to the connection string, here's where we set the settings of where this database is that we're connecting to. So we're going to build this connection string, and it brings up this little wizard. Now, most of my databases are in the old format of Access in the 2003 version. So it is an MDB database. That's the format that we use over here. So I'm going to use JET. Always look for the word JET. That's the provider. Then I'm going to move to Connection. And over here, we're going to go find that database. And I know it's in the same folder as my Delphi files. There's the CD database. I'm going to click on that and go, there we go. That's what I want. Now, if I leave it like this, that'll be fine. But the problem is if I move that folder where the database is, it's going to keep on looking for that database in that particular path. So I'm actually going to delete all of that and just have the name of the database. So that way, if I move this to a flash drive or to another computer, it will still work because it will look for that database in the folder where all the Delphi files are. So as long as you keep it there, it will be fine. This admin and blank password isn't 100% necessary. So I'm going to click test. There we go. We can see that the connection is successful. And then lastly, we want to go, yeah, I don't want to, I want to make sure that I can read stuff from the database and write it and change, make changes. So I'm select that option over there. So there's our connection string that connects to the database. Other properties is there's a login prompt. Now, we don't want the login prompt, otherwise it's going to ask us for a password every time we try to log on. I don't want that. And I think that's all we're going to need for that. So we have a ADO connection, which is connected directly to our database. Now, in a database, you can have multiple tables. So we need to then have an ADO table. ADO table. There's an ADO table, which I'm going to put on my form. Now, the reason why I have a connection is because if I've got multiple tables, I can connect all those tables to the same connection instead of me having to redo the connection string every single time. So yeah, we've got an ADO table, and this is the component that we are actually going to interact with when we're dealing with a table in, Del in the database. So first of all, we're going to give it a nice name. I'm going to give it a name. TBL. Now there's are two, there are two tables in my uh, CD uh, database. The one's called CD. The one's called Owners. I'm going to just interact with the CD table. So I've renamed it uh, TBL CD. That's the one thing. The second thing. 
Now, I need to connect this ADO table to this connection. I could do a connection string directly here. Instead of having done it in a connection, I can connect directly to the database through an ADO table. But because I've got the connection, I can just click on the concd database and then it'll be connected. And that way it's done. So if I add other ADO tables, I can simply do that as well. It's all connected to the same database. So that's the second thing we've done. We've connected it to the connection. Then we've got to go and say, you know, all those um, tables, which table do you want to use? So yeah, and the table name, we're going to specify, because we connected to that uh, the database, we can see there's a CD table and the owner table. We want the CD table. And last but not least, we're going to make it active so that we can actually see it and use it. That's technically all you need in order to interact with a database. However, sometimes you want to physically see the results or see things in the database. For that, you need two other things for, or two other components. The other one is a data source. So there's a data source. I'm going to put a data source on here. So our connection connects to the database. Our ADO table connects to the connection. Our data source is now going to connect to this table. So again, if you've got multiple tables, you'll have multiple ADO tables. You will also need multiple data sources if you want to view the stuff directly in that table. So there's the data source. I'm going to give it a nice little name like data source CD because it's dealing with a CD table. And the only thing you need to do here is the data set we're going to set to that table. So that's all the components on this side. Um, you could actually do all these components inside your unit over here. There's no problem doing that. But normally when you've got a big program and you've got multiple forms, you don't want to have to reconnect to every single database on each form. So what they do is they normally have a data module that we use and then every single form connects to this data module. And that way you don't have to do all these settings on every single form. So over here in the form, we now want to go to the get a DB grid. Now DB grid you see is under data controls. Let's actually go and look at data controls. There's data controls. So there's a DB grid, which I'm going to put on here, which is a way of viewing the data in the table, in the database, in the CD table of the database. But you'll see there are lots of other components like a navigator. There's a DB edit, which is just for one edit control. There's a memo for a large amount of data from one field. Um, lots of little options there. So let's just look over here. So I've got these, this DB grid, which I'm going to call DBG, DBG CD. And now I want to connect this DB grid, the database grid, to our ADO table. Now the problem is it can't, if we go up here to its data source, because we can't directly interact with that. We need to interact with the data source. The data source interacts with the ADO table, the ADO table with the connection, the connection with the database. So we, our DB grid needs to interact with this data source, which will then connect to the ADO table. Very complicated, I know, but it gets more complicated here because if I come and I click on my DB grid and I want to go select the data source, it goes, we don't recognize any data sources. That's because our data module is not connected to this unit. So in the code right at the top here where we say oh, all the users, we're going to add this DMCD underscore U, DMCD underscore U. And that way we now have access to everything that is in this ADO, which we're just going to save all just to make sure that we've all got it there. So now when I come to my DB grid and I go to the data source, we should see a list of data sources available, which should only be one. There we go. There's our data source. And there we can see all our data in our um, database and at the table. And obviously it's quite spaced out. What you can always do is you can right click on that, go to the columns editor. And we're going to go right click again, add all fields, and you can select on individual fields. And the properties over here allow you to adjust just that field. So I'm going to come to the width. We can make that a bit thinner. Let's make that 30, for example. Okay, maybe make not so thin. <laughs> make it 40. So I click on that one there, go down here, make it 40. And then on the artist, we want to make that maybe not, let's make it 100. Maybe that'll be a suitable size. You know, that seems fine. CD name, CD underscore name, sorry. We can make that 200. 
genre all the different genres we can make that maybe a hundred and then replacement value we can make that quite a bit thinner so let's make that also a hundred and then if we make this a bit wider and click on our db grid we can make that a bit wider oh, we can leave it like that that way we can see all the data okay so there we can space them out a lot nicer so also with this this navigator is another component that you can have it's also a, a db control and again you can connect its data source to the same data source and so this can interact with you with, with the database for you same with all these components here so let's just put a, a db edit over here as well so we can see what that looks like again i'm not going to change the names of these i'm just going to go and change the data source so you can see how it, it interacts with the database so there it is and we're going to just run the program hopefully it all works i know we're not doing anything special at the moment but just so that you can see how we can see all the the records in the database because of the um, the connection and as we move through okay you these controls are now available for example i can this moves down and this moves to the end and that moves to the beginning and that's adding a record so all of these have options for you now you'll notice this db this, this edit control that shows nothing because when you have a uh, db edit control we connected it to that but we need to say which field we want to refer to so there must be some sort of field name somewhere some sort of field there's field it doesn't say field maybe there's data field there's what i'm looking for so a list of all the field names are there so if we wanted for example the cd name then the cd name will appear in that db edit and as we move from record to record it will continually update to the appropriate record so that's another way of viewing maybe you don't want this table to be shown you only want to show a couple of records you could use that type of thing so just to recap we to do this we had a data module you could have had these components directly in your unit but if you have in multiple forms it's good to have a data module we had an ADO connection which we connected directly to the database by setting the connection string remember set the logging prompt off then we had the ADO table which we connected to our connection and then we set which table we wanted to refer to in that database and remember to make it active the data source connected to the ADO table and then our db elements like our db grid or the navigator or the db edit we need to set the data source to the data source in the data module also remember that before you can access the stuff in the data module right at the top you need to include the unit that you the data module unit that you just created we hope you found this video very useful in connecting to a database. For more videos on databases, you can go to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on Facebook or Twitter, or we have a website where we try to upload the videos in a nice format. Um, all of these resources are available for you, so go check it out. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.